Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint a pineapple on black watercolor paper. This is the Stonehenge Legion paper by Legion, the black watercolor paper. And I'm starting off by just sketching on with a uh, white call erase color pencil. That way I can see my lines. And um, for this pineapple, what you're gonna do is just draw kind of like a rounded rectangle. You just wanna get that basic shape. I think a lot of times we make things way too complicated. So after you've got that basic shape, and you put kind of some um, parallel kind of curved lines going from the upper left to lower right, then you just want to do some kind of cross lines. So you kind of have a checkerboard. And then on top of that, you're going to draw almost like a crown. You're going to draw these kind of like grasses that kind of spout out from the center of the top of that rectangle. Uh, they're long triangles. So we've got basic shapes here. We've got rounded rectangles, we've got curved lines, and we've got long triangles. So please don't get overwhelmed or intimidated when you have to draw something, because if you can break it down to the basic shapes, you will be able to do it. Nothing is more difficult to draw than anything else. You just need to see those basic shapes. Um, like especially like when we're drawing birds, there's a lot of ovals. There's a lot of, um, you know, triangles. There's, you know, basic shapes there. So anytime I'm going to use metallic watercolors, I like to spray them with water. Now I should have sprayed them before I actually started drawing because then they would be ready to go even quicker. But you can see it didn't take long for those to activate. I'm using the Arteza metallic watercolors. They're pretty easy to find. They are, um, because I think they ship to many countries and they're fairly affordable as far as the watercolor metallic watercolors are going you could see they're quite vibrant um, and you know for the money I think they're pretty good now I did hear some um, some of my viewers say that they purchased the set and the edges were sharp or the edges were sharp on another one of their palettes um, I have not seen that in the palettes that I have. However, if you get a palette with sharp edges, I urge you to contact Arteza because they have really good customer service and they would uh, send a replacement, I am absolutely sure. So, um, so I haven't seen that myself, but I did have two viewers respond like that. So I just want to make sure if you're getting these for your kids, you check the palette first. And honestly, I would do that anyway with any metal palette because I have a palette from Schminka that is razor sharp. I had to tape the edges on it and it was a student grade line of paints too. So um, it's just a kind of a, a good reminder that if you're, you know, buying supplies, especially for children, just give it a look before you hand, them, hand it over. Make sure there's no, uh, there's no issues there. Um, you know, because it's something you wouldn't even think. Of. I probably wouldn't even have thought of that either if somebody hadn't commented that. So I'm using a variety of yellows, greens, purples, and the reason I put the purple in for the shadow is because it's the opposite of yellow on the color wheel, so it's really going to make those golden colors pop, and the reds will make the greens pop. So just try to think of that, because when you're working with a metallic uh, product, you're not going to have... Um, it's going to reflect. It's going to bounce light back. It's almost going to mirror some light. So you're not going to have the um, the shading and highlight and contrast that you would have with a matte paint or with a non-reflective paint. So um, you've really got to work that design. You've got to leave some spaces in between areas so the black of the paper can give your eye a place to rest and give a shadow and give a place where there's no reflection. So when you're doing this, instead of thinking highlight and shadow, you're more thinking um, plain paper and reflection. So it's just a little bit a little bit different. Less is more I find with um, subjects like this because if you overdo it then you're just gonna end up with a big glare and uh, you might not be able to see your design. So this is a very quick painting to paint. Uh, it, the whole thing only took me 15 minutes and um, I think this would be a wonderful subject to do for like a note card. So you could take this paper, you could chop it in quarters and you could do four mini paintings and you could post them on to a a, uh, just a note card and mail them to a friend. And the nice thing about metallics is that they're like, if you're holding it in like in your hands, you really get the full impact of the metallics. But if I was to matte and frame this under glass, you wouldn't get the effect of the metallics. So this is, these paints are really best for, I think, greeting cards, art journals, bookmarks, things like that. I haven't noticed them to rub off when I've done bookmarks with them. Um, they seem to have a pretty decent binder in there. That's why you got to pre-activate them in the pans and let them sit for a couple minutes um, to loosen up that binder. Uh, so I would definitely use these on objects where you, there's nothing going to be between you and the paint um, because it will dull down the reflectability. If you are worried about doing a bookmark with these, you can always laminate them and that will reduce some of the reflectability. But with lamination where it's directly on the surface, you still get some of that. You don't have that gap like you would with a frame and a mat. 
um, it will still have some of its uh, shimmer ability. Now, because I went a little overboard and I didn't leave enough of a black gap, I'm using a um, black ink here just to kind of carve out some of these designs. This is a, um, and I don't know why I don't use this more often. This is a, just a, it came in a smart art box. It's a ink filled water brush, basically. It's got like a black India ink in there. And I'm just going in there and, um, and just kind of, bringing my design back. I think I probably would have been better off to use a brush and like some um, some of my black cat ink because I find that's not like a super diluted ink. Um, it's more for like sketching rather than having a really dark line. But, um, but it definitely helped me bring back some of that black paper and get that definition I needed between areas in the um, in the painting. You can see it reflects a lot when it's dry, but I find the colors aren't quite as vivid when you, um, like as they are when they're wet, kind of like a traditional watercolor. And I have to say, I did do a review on these Arteza watercolors and compared them to some other brands that are my favorite metallic watercolors. And um, I have to say, these are pretty good for the price. I think they run around $40, um, but I there I wouldn't say they're as good as the Paul Rubens, which are 50, or the Altenew, which are also 40, but you get 14 colors, but they're larger pans. So um, for my money, I would really choose the Altenew or the uh, the Paul Rubens, depending on the whether you like the larger pans or the smaller pans, and whether you um, you want that variety of color or not. And the Paul Rubens has some glittery colors, which are a little different than just pearl. Um, but I also realize that those brands might be difficult to get in different parts of the world. So um, especially now, things are uh, so there's been a big supply shock in the art supply market. It seems like it's been difficult to get certain products, just even in America, uh, which I don't remember ever having that issue before. So it's a nice option. Um, it's not my favorite metallic watercolor, but for the money, I think it's, uh, I think it's decent. And, um, but I did want to make a mention about those palettes since I had a couple of viewers mention that, uh, just check, you know, to make sure they're not sharp, uh, or anything like that. Um, which reminds me, you should do that anyway. Uh, and I used a pit brush pen. Now this is an India ink marker. These are kind of neat. Now I really got that black, black that I wanted to from that pit marker. And um, these are, I don't remember how much they cost. Um, I might have gotten that in a subscription box even, but they're really handy because once they dry, they will not run. So if I want to paint over this again with some watercolor, like add some more watercolor, it will not run that ink in those pit uh, brush markers. They're water-based. I could blend them with water while they're wet, but once they dry, they're done. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, happy crafting.